Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and this is an on-the-road episode with Nature at Your Door. I'm in Cornwall on the Hudson, near the Hudson River, and I'm here at the Hudson Highlands Nature Museum. It's a fantastic place for kids and families to learn all about nature and all the things I value. This particular episode is going to be about possums. So let's go inside and learn everything we need to know about the American opossum. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. responsibility of keeping him inside with us. So we are responsible for making sure he's safe and comfortable, making sure he's well fed and enriched, which means that he gets behaviors that are very exciting for him, so he doesn't get bored in his enclosure. So he's, when he's in the classroom, what we can do with our bodies is we can keep our voices low and we can keep our bodies still. Right, big noises and baby humans might make him a little bit nervous, although he is very comfortable around people he'll come to find. His name is Ozzy, short for Oswald. He's a little shy at first, so he might need a second to come out. Ooh. Hi, buddy. Fortunately for us, he's very food motivated. <laughs> <laughs> come on up, buddy. Say hi. Yep. If we're all really quiet, you'll hear his crunch. It's really funny. He's a big sapper. <laughs> Hi, Ozzy. So Ozzy here is this, an animal called the Virginia opossum. Their range does expand down to Virginia. It goes all the way up to Maine. And they are native to this area, which means that they're an, an animal that you would expect to see on a hike, in the yard, just as you're driving around, things like that. And something that's really neat about Virginia opossum is that they are the only marsupial that's native to the United States. And that word marsupial means that the females have a pouch, right? If you think of the word marsupial, are there any other animals that come to mind? Yeah. Kangaroo. No, kangaroo is perfect. Wallabies, koalas, right? Normally animals that you think of in Australia. And the unique thing about marsupials is that the females have a pouch in which they carry their young. Ozzy here is a boy. He doesn't have a pouch, <laughs> but he is a representation of that type of animal, right? Because he did come from a pouch, even though he doesn't have one himself. The thing about being carried around in a pouch as a baby is that there are lots of things that could happen in that time, right? Their development is pretty long-term, so when they're first developing inside their mother, like they do for mammals, it takes a few weeks for them to develop inside, and they give an early birth to very small, like honeybee-sized, hairless, sightless babies. A mother can have anywhere from like eight to 13. They have 13 nipples, so they can support about 13 babies. That's a whole heck of a lot to keep track of, though. So when they're first born, they crawl up her fur and into the pouch, and that's where they find the nipples to have milk so they can grow and develop, and then, as they're in the pouch, that's where they gain their sight, they grow hair, and they become pretty independent. Once they get to a certain size after a few weeks in the pouch, they migrate up onto her back and they latch and they watch and they really just observe how to be an opossum. 
So during that time, they're watching their mother climb, they're watching the types of food she's eating, her behaviors, things like that. During that time, in Ozzy's life, he was either abandoned or orphaned by his mother, which is unfortunately a pretty common thing for baby opossums because there are so many of them. It's hard to keep track, right? If they're all at the stage where they're on her back, it's pretty easy to drop one off. So Ozzy was found in a kind person's driveway in Staten Island, New York. The proper thing to do in that situation if you happen to interact with an adult or a baby opossum who needs help is to interact with a wildlife rehabilitator who has special permission and license to take care of the young. They didn't know that. They took him into their home, tried their best to care for him for about a month. However, during that time, he became very friendly with people. He became dependent on them for food. And he was missing the milk. He was missing formula, which he would have been getting at a rehab center. So he's a little bit stunted in growth. So Ozzy here, oh, sorry, but I have a name for you. <laughs> so he's a little bit smaller than you would expect a male opossum of his age to be. He is about a year and a half old, which is middle-aged for an opossum. And so he's about six pounds in the, mild, in the wild, you'd expect an eight to 10 pound male. You might notice that his lips, not his lips, his hips are a little bit weak. Um, so he does have some confusedness in his hips, but he is able to climb and move around with ease here. Um, but in the wild, he would not be a great candidate for that type of life. So these guys are pretty neat in that they are nocturnal in nature, which means that they are most active at nighttime. Ozzy here is very clearly out in the day with us, but because he lives with people, he knows when he gets food, he knows when he gets attention, so he's more than happy to come out in the day. But most of the time, he is sleeping while we're open to the public, which is why he's a great educator to come out for the animals. You right? can see the way that he moves, the way that he acts. And because he is nocturnal in nature, he has some senses in his body that are stronger than others, right? Normally when you look at an animal's face, whatever is big on their face is what they're good at. So if you think of an owl's face, what's the biggest part of an owl's face, my friends? You can see it up, their eyes. Yep, so that is their strongest sense, along with their hearing. Ozzy, when you look at his face, he's got a big old snout like a dog and giant ears. So those are his two strongest senses. He navigates the world with his nose, whereas his sight is not as great. He sees kind of shapes and shadows, but it's not his most dependent sight sense for him, right? You can see he's relentlessly sniffing around looking for whatever I have in my hand. <laughs> so I do have in here, I have applesauce, yogurt, smushed raspberry, and some dog food. So you kind of see, I know, he's like, I want that. <laughs> so you can kind of see representative of every food group. Ozzy here is an animal called an omnivore. And omni being the meaning all, right? So he eats a little bit of everything. I call them omnomnomnivores because anything that he can find with his nose, he's going to stick into his mouth and try to eat. So you'll probably notice that Ozzy has some pretty unique features on his body. In the animal kingdom, we call those adaptations, right? And an adaptation is something about an animal's body or a behavior that they do that helps them to be successful in the environment that they live in. And for a possum, they often find themselves in trees, and we call those arboreal animals, that's my kind of trees. So Ozzy's specific adaptations for tree life are his opposable thumbs, which we have as well. Can everybody show me their high five? Wiggle those thumbs around. The way that we can touch the opposite side of our palm with our thumb is a unique adaptation that humans have, porcupines have, and Ozzy also has, right? Animals that are really adept at climbing trees, like monkeys, apes, things like that. He also has a prehensile tail that doesn't have any, it has a little bit of fur, but it's mostly hairless, um, which acts as an extra limb for him. It's very strong and it helps him to be such a wonderful climber. And climbing is really important for protection so they can get away from predators if they need to. It's a wonderful way to find food if they're eating bird eggs and insects and things like that. And it's also just a safe place for them to be. Okay. Because a possum don't really have a home base, they, because they carry their babies with them, they don't really build a nest, they don't keep like a hollow in a tree that's just theirs. So they are pretty nomadic, they travel around a lot, and that is all in search of food and partnership. Right? And they are pretty solitary in nature, they don't stay with their partner long term. 
it's mostly like crossing in the night, <laughs> as you might say. Um, but they are just traveling for food sources and to find partners as they move along. Something that we can do to help possum is if you find them in your yard, the best thing to do is to respect their space, keep pets away, and if you notice that there's one that's sticking around for an extended period of time, you can offer them like a nest shelter. Um, so during the day, they really just need a place to keep home, to be cool. In the forest, that's going to be a tree cavity, maybe a hollow log, something like that. A place to stay safe while they're sleeping. But if they have that opportunity in the yard, they will definitely take that opportunity. <laughs> so something that's really neat about a possum as well is that when they interact with predators, or they get nervous by cars or humans, some things like that, they do this thing called playing a possum. And this might be something you've heard of, like playing dead. It's a totally voluntary act in which they have no control over how long they stay in that state. But they do, they'll, they'll show their teeth, they'll fall at the mouth, they'll smell really bad, and they kind of just like keel over and pass out. And during that time, it does leave them vulnerable to things like being hit by cars. But it does protect them from the predators that they have, like coyotes, fox, animals that like the chase, right? So those animals are active predators. They want to chase after the food that they have. So if they find something that's dead, they're not going to be very interested in that. But it does leave them vulnerable to scavenging and unfortunately being hit by cars and roadways, which is a pretty frequent thing for them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode about possums and our visit here to the Hudson Highlands Nature Museum. I can't say enough about this place. They have so many different programs. You can become members here. You can help and contribute to the maintenance of different animals they have here. They use all for nature education. They even have a preschool program for young naturalists, which is really fantastic. And I wanna say that I became a biologist when I had first discovered redback salamanders under rocks when I was like five years old. Remember, if you like my channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and I love hearing from my viewers. And don't forget to check out in my description everything you need to know about the Hudson Highlands Nature Museum, how to find this place, how to visit, and how to be a part of this learning community. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door on the road at the Hudson Highlands Nature Museum.